Yes, we start. So uh, we have completed four units. Uh, the fourth unit deals with uh, non-linear data structure graph. So we have seen all the topics of uh, four units. Uh, now uh, we entered into fifth unit. In fifth unit, uh, the major topics uh, covered will be uh, searching, shorting, and hashing. Uh, regarding the topics of fifth unit, and the hashing part that is in the second half of the fifth unit is entirely a different topic when compared with the searching and shorting. Uh, those two things are task. Searching is a task and the shorting is a task. But the hashing is a kind of uh, data structure, data structure meant for storing the data. So, so far we have seen uh, data structure only. So let me start the fifth unit by introducing what is the uh, kind of uh, task called hashing. Hashing is a task but which maintains a table for storing the data. So that's what a hashing or hash table is treated as a kind of data structure. Uh, but when you take the case of searching and uh, shorting, they are all uh, kind of uh, task uh, intended to do a uh, kind uh, job. Say, for example, searching, uh, what you are interested is, uh, when you are giving an element, uh, uh, element and the array and a list your objective is to search whether the given element is present in the list or not or present in the array or not that is what your objective so you have to scan through the list uh, based on the availability of the element you should give the answer that is the uh, general goal of searching what is meant sorting here also uh, a list of numbers is given to you that numbers are in a uh, jumbled manner. That means that the numbers are in a random manner. But uh, what you have to do is you have to take those numbers and you need to do certain tasks so that the output will be a list which contains the numbers in ascending order. That is uh, one after the other. It will be it should be reorganized or rearranged. That arrangement should be in the fashion of ascending order. So that is the uh, idea behind uh, shorting, general goal of shorting. So you have plenty of sorting techniques that we will be seeing in the later part. And what is hashing is, so hashing is the one which is meant for uh, data storage, but the data storage should be retrieved in a faster manner. So they are, so see all the data structure are built with uh, arrangement of data items. That means uh, storage of data items. Uh, there are many facilities are available, many data structures are available, but this is one kind of uh, technique by means of which you can achieve certain things. You can achieve certain things that is not uh, there in the uh, other data structures that we have studied so far. So uh, to understand further into the topic, let me go to the slide. Um, where we have two starters. Uh, yeah, yes. Uh, hashing. You first know the need of the hashing, why the hashing is needed. Before that, assume you want to design a system. That is, you want to design a software uh, for storing the uh, employee records. It may be employee records or you may be a customer records if you are running a shop or it may be a student records for your classroom as well. So that's a different scenario. But here, it is uh, storing a employee records along with their phone numbers. So I need uh, to design a system to store the record uh, with the name of my employee as well as the phone number of the employee. But that system should uh, allow facilities to insert uh, any other information, including phone number or any other corresponding information. And with the help of phone number, I can to uh, search the employee records and I can take out the information. And by the help of phone number, I have to delete a particular uh, employee from the system. So this is what the task that I am interested to do. See, remember. So what is my task? I want to design a system. That system to, should allow uh, to store employee records by inserting the phone number, by uh, searching the phone number, and by deleting a phone number. So these kind of facilities should be uh, created in the system. So what data structure I can go for? 
because it is a list of employee names along with their phone numbers and their associated information. So it is a list. So what I can go for, I can go for array implementation as pointed out here, array implementation, or I can go for a linked list implementation, or I can go for a balanced binary search tree with the help of a phone number as a key. Phone number, 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 digit number, but dent digit number, or ordering phone number, large phone number, root node, or phone number, the root node, and the root left side, lesser phone numbers, right side, greater phone numbers, and the market. And here, there is one more data structure that we are not discussed so far, that is a table. It is called by the name direct access table. So just a table. Or Excel sheet line up on a bottom, on a name entry, but in a Pagoda, now on a mark, go look at a sharp on a How I have shared your marks, on a names in the day, marks out of 50 in the marks out of 100. So that is a table. That's a table. Uh, likewise, in a table, I can uh, store the employee records. Do you agree with that or not? So I can imagine a table, uh, or I can construct a table. In the, in the table, first uh, column, I can have a employee name. Second column, I can have a phone number. Third column, I have an address field. Fourth column, I can have a other kind of details like that. So I can go for direct access table. So these are all the facilities available in the context of data structure by means of which I can design the system. I can design the system. But uh, I need to uh, go for any one data structure. Either I can go for array or linked list or uh, I can go for a balanced research tree, or I can go for direct system. That's what the requirement. I cannot go for, I cannot use all the four things in my uh, system, but I have to use only one system, only one thing in my system. So before that, uh, when I go for pur purchasing any uh, product or any uh, gadgets, I wish to uh, see the alternatives, uh, pros and cons of the alternative, uh, then my requirement, based on the requirement, I will choose one. Right. Say, for example, if you are going for buying a mobile phone, uh, you will be brought with many alternatives based on your requirement and budget only. You will uh, choose one particular model. Likewise, I want to design a system. Uh, I have to think about what data structure I have to use for design such system. But the facilities or the alternatives given to me are I can use either array, I can use linked list, or I can go for uh, balanced binary history, or I can go for a direct access table. But I am analyzing, analyzing the pros and cons, which is suitable for my uh, storage. When I see to the arrays and linked list, what is there is, I have to search, if I want to search the employee record through phone number means, I have to search only in the linear fashion. If I have n number of employees, say for example, n equal to 1000 means, my searching should be start from 1 and it goes up to 1000. Say for example, my employee is at the second position, my searching is very faster. But against that, if my employee record is at 999th position, then I have to search from 1 to 999 locations. So it is costlier. But imagine if I store the employee phone number in a binary search tree. So first, uh, if your phone number is given for search, I will compare that by phone number with this uh, tree root node. If that phone number is lesser, then I will omit the entire right side part, then I will take only the left side part. That is, my uh, searching is moderately reduced. Moderately, the time taken for the searching is moderately reduced. So compared with the arrays and linked list, uh, especially for searching, not only with respect to insertion and deletion, but especially for searching, I can go for uh, binary search. And what is uh, direct access table? Direct access table, it is not a new idea. It is an array only. It is an array only. Maybe you can treat it as a n-dimensional array. One dimension will be a phone number, another dimension may be uh, name of the employee, another dimension may be name, may be address of the employee, another dimension email ID of the employee, another dimension may be salary particulars of the employee, like that. You can take a direct access table as a big array or an array will contain n dimensions, multi-dimensional array also you can take that. What is there is uh, here, uh, you need more memory space. You need uh, more memory space, or the space record is very large. Also, also you need uh, to hold the information. That is very big uh, phone number, 10-digit number, uh, storing it into uh, an array. Uh, 
uh, will be a tedious one because the number of digits will not confine to the uh, range of an integer variable range of integer variable. so that's uh, the small problem i am facing i mean i go for a direct access table but what i can do is even though direct access table is by the name itself direct access so if you want to search any uh, number uh, phone number then with the help of index i can easily search with the help of index again so that's what with the array and linked list also but uh, in linked list that is not the fashion that is not the fashion but with array it is possible but with the linked list it is not the fashion so like here uh, but the array is say, at single dimensional if you want to have for more multi dimensional that is direct access table that is okay but uh, when you want to store this n digit it is not possible it is not possible sometimes you may face a very difficulty so what you can do is you can maintain a, the concept of direct access table because you want to store more number of data that is multi dimensional array is needed in terms of a table in terms of table in addition to that you need to have a function you need to have a task called hashing hashing what this hashing will do is that hashing will convert a very big number example for in this case the phone number into a smaller digit number with the help of a function and the help of a table as table so what i need to have is i need to have a direct access table that direct access table plus a hash function plus a hash table will be a new alternative idea which will give improvement to direct access table in terms of storing the very large uh, phone number as well as retrieving the phone number in a faster manner i hope you know understand the idea behind it so you want to store you want to create a system like this for storing the employee records with the help of a table that table is associated with hash function what purpose the hash function is there because whenever a very large integer like phone number is coming that the phone number will be reduced to be a smaller number and it is a treated as a key and that key is maintained in a smaller table like an index like table and the index table is called hash table and this hash function is used to compute and the hash, the hash table is used to locate then with the help of the hash table the main data is located in the uh, kind of a table big table that is a direct access table so that is the idea or that is the uh, need where we have to go for uh, this kind of stuff so all the merits and demerits uh, available with arrays linked list balanced binary system and direct access table can be overcome with the help of this technique the help of this technique so what are the requirements a table hash function and a hash table so that are the requirements let me see the thing one by one what is a hash function so hash function is a mathematical function which accepts very big number very big number example a phone number like 10 digit number and it converts into a small practical uh, integer number small small number that is the number of digits. so in the 10 digit number it converted into a two digit number and that two digit number is used as a index in the hash table like serial number index means like a serial number from that index yeah another array is pointed out another array is pointed out another array is that array will point the main data main data so the index is stored in a table that index uh, table is called hashing table indexing table or hashing table so this will be very useful in uh, so how to choose a hash function because you need two things right one is hash function what is the purpose of hash function hash function has to accept a number and then that number will be uh, reduced to a smaller number so you need a function that function should be efficiently computable function in such a way that you have to choose a function and then that function should distribute the keys uniformly let me discuss uh, how a non uniform distribution of keys will give problem to us in the example but so to be speaking in the initial stage your hash function should uniformly distribute the keys then once the, you generated the key that key is to be used as a index or a serial number like a concept in the hash table from that entry then you have to locate to the main table where the original data is there so that is the idea so let me explain it again with the help of a function 
so what is hashing data structure hashing data structure is the uh, kind of structure used to organize the data with the help of a hash function as well as a hash table first you need a hash function in general a modulo operation is treated as a hash function let the hash function be denoted as h of x so if you take this as h of x take this as h of x then the h of x is defined as h of x is equal to x modulo 10 here x is the value that you want to store suppose if the list of uh, values given to you is 11 12 13 14 15 that is it. if you want to uh, create a hash table for that is i want to store uh, 11 in which position 12 in which position for which i if i am using this hash function means then i have to use this 11 here in the place of x so 11 mod 10 11 mod 10 will give 1 11 mod what is this modulo operation modulo operation what is this modulo operation this modulo operation will uh, do a division and uh, return the remainder and return the remainder so what is the remainder so uh, 10 here sorry uh, 10 here this is not uh, 10 let me take 10 here so what what is the answer for this uh, here one times so 10 so what is the remainder one so that means number 11 should be stored in the first index so number is stored in first index next to 12 mod 10 stored in the second index 13 mod 10 so, so like this so this is the hashing structure structure so very easy right So the mathematical function in general should be a modulo function. Very simpler mathematical function that is a hash function that is used as a modulo function. So this is the idea behind hash structure. So here it is a two-digit number, but strictly speaking, for practical real-time application, it is not be a two-digit number. It may be a very long integer also. It may be very long integer also. Accordingly, you should choose the function with the key. You know to produce a key, right? Right. what is the problem with this kind of hashing so this is called hashing that's what we explain uh, but there is a problem associated with the hashing what is it the problem is collision what is meant by collision say for example here there is a key uh, that is the names are given names are given uh, for which you have phone number with the help of hash function some modulo function i understood that john smith should be stored in number second hash table number one hash table uh, lisa smith should be stored in number one hash table uh, sam doe should be stored in number four hash table sandra doe d will stored in the number 14 hash table so if that is the case that means uh, no collision is there suppose if we have particular hash value say for example number 2 is having uh, holded by two person at a time or two keys at a time two key or conflicting for one hash key then that situation is said to be collision how to avoid collision there are uh, effective collision uh, handling techniques are also available uh, let me see the collision handling techniques one by one so there are two major collision handling techniques one is separate chaining another one is open addressing very 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 easy to understand what is separate chain whenever you find a collision whenever you find a collision what you need to do create do is you need to create a linked list you need to create a linked list and in the linked list you have to assign the records so it is like a chain it is goes whenever collision occurs say for example uh, here uh, john smith is also requiring two sandra d is also requiring two so what you can do is in the location 2 in the location 2 in the location 2 i can make a uh, list like uh, john smith and one data node and uh, sandra d is another data node if there is a collision so now sam smith is also referring to do uh, two as a key and uh, sam without any collision without any conflict without any conflict so that is the idea of separate chain but what is there requirement of additional memory another one is open addressing another one is open addressing here if you could see that there might be some array 
there might be some array there might be some array between the hashes uh, that are uh, allocated and that array location may be free may be free so what you can do is you can store that uh, uh, value instead of conflicting for one value you can store the value next to to there if that is a slot if there is a slot suppose if number 3 is free then you can arrange sandra d2 number 3 because number 2 is allotted to john smith in case number 3 is not free then you can go for uh, check number 4 or number 5 so wherever the location is uh, possible and free then you can store sandra d in that location instead of storing the 2 because the number 2 is already allotted to swans john smith so this is the idea of again open address so what is the idea in separate uh, chain in separate chain you have to create a separate node like a linked list fashion and you need to store the data without conflict what is open addressing you have to check for any any open memory is available any open location is available if any open location available then you have to store the data in that open location so in doing so here uh, the memory is effectively utilized we are not going for creating the additional memory but the inside memory you are looking for the additional slot wherever is required you are adding it but still also there occurs some problems that we are going to discuss one by one with an example let me take the first one separate chain say for example uh, these are the list of items given 500 so what is the hash function i have defined if the hash function defined is key mod 7 what is key in the place of key i have to put 50 so 50 mod 7 so what i have to do i have to put 50 Then I have to do seven outside. How many? Seven, seven, sir. Forty-nine. So forty-nine. So what is the remainder? One. So what I have to do? I have to store fifty in the first location. Then seven hundred. Seven hundred. I have to put in the outside. I have to make seven. How many times? One hundred. Hundred times. That is zero. So I have to put seven hundred in the zero. Now the third element seventy-six. Third element seventy-six. Seventy-six is stored in the Uh, uh sixth location because 76 if you take 76 if you take uh 170 another 6 you have to draw it down zero times so the remainder is 6 so 6 now come to 85 so 85 if you take 85 if you take uh divide so 17 uh remainder 1 then uh, you have to bring down the 5 here uh, you put it 27 27 14 Uh, remainder is one. So where I have to store seven, uh, store eighty-five. Eighty-five I have to store in one. So if you go and put eighty-five in the first location, uh, I wonder that number fifty is also there in the same location. So that I can say conflict. So this conflict is said to be collision. So in order to avoid this collision, what you have to do is, with the help of separate chaining, with the help of separate chaining, what you have to do is. You have to create a linked list kind of node, and in that new node, you have to assign 85. Likewise, 92 also holding the same location. 92, 92. If you take it with the seven, one, so two, two, you have to get three seven seven twenty one, three. You know, so remainder is one. So 92. So 90. Already 50 is there in the first location. 80 is also added with the help of separate chaining. So one more chain. Likewise, you can go for n number of chains, n number of chains, wherever you face conflict. Where we face conflict, not in one location but also in another location. See, one or two. So this is the idea of separate chaining. So what is the advantage of separate chaining? So when you look at the idea, it is very easy to implement, implement, and uh, you, you, you need not to worry about whether the hash table is filled or not, because you can add additional node in the like a linked list node, and you can keep on increasing. It. And it is not that much sensitive to hash function. So whatever may be the hash function you are using, it is not sensitive. So you can keep the hash function as such throughout the uh, concept, and that same kind of function can be used. And uh, you can be used uh, mostly when you are not in a position to know the maximum numbers. So here if the numbers are fifty, seventy. So how many numbers? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I have made a zero to six locations. So suppose if it is a dynamic in nature, you are not able to know. The size, then also it is possible because parallelly you can go and create parallelly. You can. So you need you cannot restrict to seven. You can parallelly you can create adding the elements one by one. Suppose if you are defined the array with the predefined size. So what is the additional uh, barrier that we have to pose? That is a disadvantage. One is the hatch performance. 
catch my memory is memory performance catch memory that is uh, whenever you want to retrieve any data or search uh, there is a idea called uh, the concept of catch memory you will study in detail in the operating system when you are going to study the memory concept so there are many idea is there so whatever the data that you are accessing from your laptop or from your mobile or not directly from the uh, memory that you are uh, looking for so there are cases a catch memory catch memory is a temporary memory that is created at that particular uh, retrieval process and that temporary memory should be faster enough in order to retrieve the data for you so if you go for implementing the separate chaining process then the performance of catch will be little bit inferior or little bit slow or it is not good it is not good because it is stored in the request otherwise and also you may say that wastage of memory because you are creating one node and in that node you are placing a pointer uh, with the null value if it is not uh, going to point other elements or it is going to store the address so some additional burden is there some additional burden is there you are going for extra space for links and if the chain is very long if it goes on long then the searching is also taking very much time like a very big link list so these are all the disadvantages of separate chain so in order to avoid this uh, thing what you can go for is we can go for ad open addressing so what is the idea of open addressing say for example number 50 is stored in first location suppose number 85 is coming the 85 is also going to locate the location find the first location but that the location is not free means then instead of going for a separate chain like a link list what you can do is you can look for some other location suppose in any location is free say for example number fourth location is free then you can store the number in the fourth place that is what the idea of open address here you have uh, many uh, concepts linear probing quadratic probing double hash and all is based on the hashing function that is used so how to go for a next slot uh, when the uh, desired slot is uh, not free so it is based on the hash function let me check how the hash function is utilized in order to uh, create a uh, open addressing concept with respect to linear probing uh, quadratic probing or there is one more idea is also there uh, random probing or double hash so here you need to work with hash function that is you need to modify the hash function in order to stick on to one function for the entire uh, data storage you can keep on changing the hash function so when you uh, keep on changing the hash function then it is possible for you to at least to overcome the uh, limitations or to overcome the conflict let me come to the first uh, case linear probing linear probing so the hash function may be has x percentage yes percentage yes so if that is full in case if that is full so you whenever an insert uh, element is given so you are keep on inserting the element into the uh, table in case if that uh, hash function is seems to be full and there are any conflicts you can try another hash function that is by adding one by adding one into the hash function in case if that is also full then you can add it two with the hash function result if that is also full then you can also three right let me check with an example say for example the same function key mod 7 so what is key 50 so if you compute 50 mod 7 the answer is 1 so 1 the item is stored if you compute 70 mod 7 answer is 0 the zero is placed if you compute 76 mod 7 the answer is a 6 and the 6 is placed if you compute 85 mod 10 here is the problem so if you compute 85 mod 10 so what is that it will uh, try to occupy the location of 50 so this hash function is said to be full so what i have to go for we have to go for another hash function what is this hash function is saying 85 plus 1 mod 7 now what is 86 86 coming so now if i 86 if you put if you put 17 1 Sixteen, six, uh, two, uh, seven here. Two, seven. Remainder is two. So now the location is two. So you have to check whether two is free or not. Yes, two is free. So you have to put eighty-five here. So instead of conflicting with the fifty, uh, which is stored in the location one for the same location, or instead of drawing a one more new slot like a link list, 
what you are doing is here we are changing the hash function to one position and then in that new position we are trying if that new position is also filled up what you have to do you have to increase the hash function to one more number one more number so that is the idea that you have to do say for example let me take this number uh, 1021 i think 1021 is in the previous example you won't see uh, sorry 92 let me take the 92 Uh, 92. So 92. If I want to check, so what is my hash function now? 85 plus 1, right? So 95 plus 1, uh, 93. For story 93, then my number is 93. If I put 7, 17. So 7 comes in, then 3. Uh, sorry, 2 uh, comes in, uh, then 3. So here uh, 23. So 3 sevens are 21. 21. Then remainder is 2. So what is the location 2? So if I want to store 93 in the second location, oh my God, my 85 is there already. So again, conflict is there. So what I have to do is this hash function is said to be empty. So I have to go for another function. So 92 hash of x plus 2. So I have to add 2. So what is that? 94. For 94, I have to calculate. For 94, I am calculating the, with this with the help of 7. So then I have to do the idea. So if you do this, then the location will be coming as 3. So 7, 1, 7, sir. Seven one one seven twenty four uh, three seven sir twenty one twenty one. What is the remainder? Three. So the location three. So now you have to check whether three is empty or not. Yes, three is empty. So if that if that is the case, three is empty. That is the case. The ninety two is place. In case the ninety two is uh, that three third place is also not three. Then what do you have to go? You have to keep on increasing. Has of x plus four. Has of x plus five. Has of x plus seven. Like that you can keep on increasing. And one particular point of time, you will find the answer. But what is the idea? Is here is here you will uh, suffer from a kind of uh, thing called clustering. That is, many consecutive elements will start. So many consecutive elements will be start occurring to the nearby position. Some kind of clustering will occur, even though it is easy to compute. Just adding one more must get performance. But what you feel is, in order to find a slack. You will find many conflicts in uh, or many neighborhoods and other things are there. So it suffers from a kind of clustering. That is, many consecutive elements form groups, and it starts taking time to find a free slot. So in order to such an element, so what you got to go is you have to go for the next one. So linear probing explained with another idea. So this is the initial hash table. This is initial hash table. So this is the index. Index. This is the array location. The green are empty. Uh, red is already occupied, uh, and uh, this is uh, ready to delete. Ready to delete. So this is not we are going to see here. Uh, now, what is the key? Key is seventy. That is mod key. So, so the element seven is coming. So initially you are going for hash not seven. So what is hash not seven? It is seven. So in the seventh location you are storing the seven. Another element is thirty six. So where we have to hash not? We are still we are in the hash not. Hash not. Where we have to store thirty six in the second location? Because if you do the operation thirty six minus seven, that is seven. Then insert twenty four. If I insert twenty four, then I face some problem. Why? What is the problem? Because twenty four. If you put seventeen, you put seventeen. How many is it mean? One seventy. One seventy. So seven you are putting here. What is the remainder? What is the remainder you are getting? Seven. In the seventh place, what is there already? The seventh place already. Uh, seven is there. So what you have to do? I have to go for incrementing the one. Hatch one of twenty-four. So that means I have to increment the position by one. So that is goes to eight. So likewise, you can give for linear probing. Let me come to quadratic probing. What is quadratic probing? See quadratic probing. What is the change? One star one. So this, that same you have to start hash of x percentage of uh, yes you have to start in case if that is full then you have to go for instead of the linear probing which adds one at a time here you are adding one star one for a particular uh, conflict if that is also getting conflict then you go for two star two if that is also getting conflict then you go for three star three likewise you keep on increasing so this idea is called quadratic because this uh, idea of uh, multiplying one number with another is looks like a polynomial function and that function is a quadratic function that's why it names is uh, quadratic so it will overcome the catch memory as well as it will overcome the clustering also so 5 mod 7 it is located in 5 uh, 
56 mod 17. See 56 plus 1 star 1 mod 17. So that is 56 is stored in uh, 56 is stored in 6th location. Next the third element 73. 73 will be stored in 73 2 star 2. 73 2 star 2. So it is stored in 9th location. So 124. 124 star plus star 3 star. It is stored in 6th location. So likewise, if you go for storing the item with respect to quadratic probing. Next, another probing is a random probing. So here, what is the thing is random a random number generator function is associated. So if you are using any programming language, this kind of a function, input function is available. Maybe in different syntax, maybe in different syntax, it is available and you have to choose. So that is you start with simple hash function. You start with the simple hash function and you keep on storing the numbers uh, by uh, the index value given by this hash function. In case if the syntax value given by the hash function is full, then you have to try a new hand function. New hash function is old hash function plus a yeah, random number generated modulus. Like if that is also uh, full, then you have to go for new random number generator. So every time the random number generator will give you a new random number based on the new random number, you will locate a new position in order to store the element so as the conflicts or the collision is completely avoided. That is one another idea. And the last idea is double hash. So you have to use two hash function. You have to use two hash function. That is, normally you start with a simple hash function like this as x uh, yes. in case if that is full you have to go for choosing as x a old gas function plus one star has to x if that one star has to x is full then you go for two star has to x if that is full then uh, so you can go for the double hashing like that but there is a double hashing function since you are computing the hash function two times it will take more computation time since it is taking more computation time automatically it is so poor cluster problem so no clustering is uh, formed, no clustering is formed, so as to avoid uh, no confusion over the data entry well. So even though no clustering is formed, but we are facing with poor catch performance. So why does poor catch performance is obtained is because you are calculating the hash value two times. So if, since you are calculating the hash function two times, your computation time is very high. Very high. So that's what uh, the problem faced with the double hash, right? So the final conclusion is between separate chaining and open addressing when a collision occurs. So when a collision occurs, you either go for separate chaining process or open addressing process. In separate chaining, the separate chaining concept is very simple to implement. Just you are adding a node and that node is inserted in the list as a linked list concept. But here uh, that kind of uh, thing is uh, not there. But what you do, you need to do a ASCII function. Here, some linked list idea is there. So here, you are creating a new hash function. Here, the hash tables uh, slot may be left empty, some slot, because you are using the concept of linked list. So, there may be some slot that may be filled empty. But here, it is not the case. It is completely occupied. It is already said that it is very less sensitive to hash function. So, here, uh, it is uh, less, sens less sensitive to hash function. But here, it needs some extra care. In order to avoid, so in order to avoid the clustering or in order to avoid the uh, burden with the load, uh, you need to go for uh, some different different kinds of hash functions like that. So whenever you do not know how many and how many keys are going to be inserted, you are not in well advanced. You do not know only this many keys are you are going to store under this much. In that aspect, chaining will be most preferable. Suppose you know this much uh, number of keys will be we are going to store and this is what the frequency that is the repetition of then open addressing is there. When you choose the chaining, what is that the catch performance is not that much as good. As well as you are using linked list, so the retrieval process is very slow. Very slow. But uh, it provides better catch addressing. You have to choose a uh, choose an ideal uh, probing method for open addressing. That is here that uh, wastage of memory in terms of uh, nodes. But here, that is not that much uh, wastage of memory when compared with uh, here. Here, some additional address uh, uh, are, uh, are stored. That means in the form of links, in the form of links. But here, that uh, links are not available. So these are the uh, uh, comparison between a separate chaining and uh, open addressing with respect to hashing. So let me summarize the idea once again. So where we have started, we started with an idea of designing a system. I want to design a system in which I want to store the employee records. I have, my idea is not only store the employee records, but 
I have to arrange the employee records in such a way that whenever I want to insert a phone number, I can insert the phone number in a corresponding location, along with the additional information. If I want to search, that is a major task. If you want to search a particular phone number, then that uh, search based on the uh, phone number search, I have to retrieve the first uh, other information that should also be a good one in terms of performance. If I want to delete any record with the help of phone number, that is, so this is not my requirement. For this requirement, so far I have studied four dip, uh, different data structures. That is uh, linear data structure with respect to list, linear data structure with respect to stack and queue, nonlinear data structure tree, nonlinear data structure graph. So four data structures I have seen. Among the four data structures, what data structure I have chosen for this kind of system implementation? I can go for list first because it is a list of employee. So either I can go for array implementation or linked list implementation. That is a linear data structure. I can go for array or I can go for linked list. That is pointer implementation. Or I can go for balanced search tree. Or yeah, another thing you yeah, called it multidimensional array. That is a, a table which allows direct access. That is a direct access table. And in each of the cases, you find uh, pros and cons. Pros and cons. Among these, direct access table seems to be little better, little better than compared with the array linked list and balance list. But it has some problems because of storing a very large integer number. So, in order to avoid this problem, what technique you are going hashing? What is the purpose of hashing? Hashing with the help of your function, with the help of your mathematical function, it will compute a uh, smaller possible number for the bigger number and that smaller possible number will be stored as the hash table that uh, smaller possible number will represent say, an index for the table index for the table so that's what the idea so uh, how, what is how to create a hash function what are the good qualities of a hash function uh, how to uh, create a hash table what are the components of hash table we have studied uh, with an example, I have illustrated how the numbers are inserted by computing the hash function. What is the problem with the hashing? Collision is the major problem in the hashing. Uh, one key is conflicted uh, by more than two data elements. Uh, then how to avoid this collision? There are two ideas. One is separate chaining and open addressing. So separate chaining we have studied uh, like, uh, with the help of a linked list concept. And uh, we studied the advantages and uh, we have discussed the advantages and disadvantages. And in open addressing, we have three varieties, uh, not three varieties here, four varieties, linear probing, quadratic probing, uh, random probing, double yes. Each case, I have explained it with an example, uh, with a diagrammatic explanation. Uh, it is provided uh, in order to understand the idea how the hash is uh, varied with respect to avoid collision in terms of open addressing. So you start with the standard hash function. In case if you find any conflict, you are keep on increasing the uh, hash function by a uh, value with respect to a polynomial, with respect to a random function, or with respect to a number, you can keep on increasing it. Or with respect to another hash function, that is a double hash. So finally, I concluded today's uh, this uh, discussion with the comparison between uh, separate chaining and uh, open addressing, right? Uh, with this, I stop the recording because of uh, uploading purpose.